Randy and I have been friends for a long time. Come on up here. Come up to the front. Nice shirt, buddy. Shorts. Thank you, brother. Very colorful. Looking good. You got some Converse on there? I, I, I do, man. I'm rocking it. Dude, you are rocking it. For those of you who don't know, Randy Bird is my dear friend. He's from Portland, Oregon. Or actually, I believe, let me see if I get this right, Randy. You are from, are you near Corvallis or in Corvallis? Yeah, I, I'm near Corvallis. I'm, I'm in Albany as we speak, but it's right, Corvallis, Lebanon, Salem. Awesome. Now, before I interrogate you, we only got 17 minutes left. You're okay. Tell us your real estate story real quick. We want the 30,000 foot view. Tell us the story of Randy Bird, your epic journey in real estate that has brought you to the stage. Absolutely. The elevator story. So basically, uh, real estate licensed 18 years. I've been a general contractor for 27 now. And I was building houses, uh, you know, seven or eight months and, and taken to build them through the winter and everything. And then the realtor would sell it in about six hours and make 30 grand. And I was like, I got to do that too. And I, I really just <laughs> did it out of greed. I got my license out of greed. Um, once I was licensed, decided to move. So we moved from Santa Rosa, Windsor up to Reading. And I really started my real estate career there. Um, had a really uh, robust real estate career. Never looked back. Um, my very first year in business. By the way, that's where Max, you I, met. You, you know, were... I did. Yeah, three hundred thirty-five thousand my first in. full year. And I was so. You and I met when you were in Reading. We actually met um, before that. We met in Windsor one time, and we it blew us away when we talked about this. But we were both at a funeral for a buddy of ours um, named oh. Patrick, and my son's middle name is Patrick because of uh, this particular gentleman. But at the time, we were both in a network marketing company and didn't know each other. And our paths crossed years later. Wow! Yeah, Pat uh, Lockwood. Yep, Pat Lockwood. And they were developers and they developed homes and sold them all throughout Windsor. Yep, Lockwood right? Development in Windsor. I was working with them. and um, Harry, you remember Harry? Um, I don't, Harry, no. That was Harry Lockwood. That's Pat's dad. Oh, the dad. Yes. Yeah, I do. I, I remember now, but I did not recognize Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't actually meet there, but we were at that same funeral. That's right. We, we were. And then we met, we met in, I believe it was, in, it was in Bay Area. I want to think it was the. Uh, Walnut Creek. Best Walnut Steiner. Creek, Hilton Hotel. Yeah. At, uh, yeah, that was awesome. We've been buddies ever since. So I interrupted. Now. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, no, no. You're, you're totally fine. Um, so, you know, really got out, of, got into real estate out of just greed, frankly, to make my own money on my deals and double end them. And then really decided I loved the career Im immensely. Um, I was rookie of the year at Cole Vega the first year and I made like $38,000. And I was like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? This is not good. And Remax and came you, along. And that was rookie of the year. That is yeah, hilarious. I was I was the ball in the office. I made 38 grand, you know. I didn't make the most money, but I guess I had the most promise amongst the rookies or whatever. But um, <laughs> I, I quit shortly after that. I was like, okay, if I'm the rookie of the year, I'm in the wrong place. But um, Remax had a hundred percent office. I, I was paying twelve hundred bucks a month, scared out of my wits. And that's the only reason that I really, really dominated that first full year in real estate. Um, dominated my own goals and my dreams, I mean, and uh, went on to be, you know, successful in, in many levels. I was made, I made $335,000 GCI, my very first full year in real estate. Well, let me, and frankly, well, let me stop you there. Was, was that at Remax? That was at Remax, yeah. Okay, so let's back up. You said it was $1,200 a month for 100%? Yep. So you only paid them twelve hundred times twelve, like fourteen four, right? Four, fourteen four a year plus three hundred dollars for Remax fee. It was three thirty a month plus escrow transaction plus, fees. Plus 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 plus. What do you think yeah. to make three forty eight plus the admin fee point zero zero one six nine? What do you think you actually paid them? You made three forty eight. I would not be surprised if you paid them thirty to forty thousand dollars in fees. Yeah, I got the point one grandfather that you know of. Uh, yeah, I still paid them uh, over twenty five thousand in fees. Yeah, so people here, and I just want to cover that here. They hear, oh my gosh, you're gonna have a hundred percent for twelve hundred bucks a month. There's a reason us Remax agents would tease each other and call it Femax. You can right. only do that if you're a Remax agent. We would get around and call it Femax. In nine months, my last nine months with that company, after being there for twelve years, in my twelfth year. In a nine-month period, I paid them $177,000 in fees on wow. top of my $1,200 a month to be at a 100% agent. This is the biggest, like, um, it's like a, uh, putting the, 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 the bead under the three walnut shells. It's moving so quick, you don't know what shell is. 
you think you're at 100 for 1200 bucks a month but if you sell a lot holy toledo so true yeah. Brent, i got a i got a coaching client can't say names but they're on a 98 2 split with the 0 0.001 franchise fee and, what and they, they were like there's no way you could ever match this or somebody could ever match it we were having a conversation and they right. paid eighty eight thousand dollars to remax last year in a 98 2 split there you go and they sell <laughs> high so let's get back to the the math let's look at the math right so don't you guys listening in that audience thank you randy when people hear that, go, great, let's do the math. What do you pay? I don't know. We'll go look and let's come back. Oh my gosh, I paid them 88000 It's all about the math. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Anything else you want to share about your background before I start interrogating you about building a huge business? Uh, no, I think uh, let the interrogations begin, man. Okay. So Randy and I met as team leaders at Keller Williams in 2010. He pulled up in a big old black huge truck with big tires and he's just bigger than life i love randy bird he's my dear friend that's why i called him the second i saw this i also called rick jiha the second i saw this and marguerite and jeff willems and different people i'm like you guys got to check this out of course you loved it and and um and you got going and so today you have hundreds and hundreds of agents and broker associates you're on a roll. You, you, we act, James and I, we looked at my business and we moved you up five jumps. We jumped you up five. Your momentum is so strong. We moved you in front of five people who have bigger groups than you, but you have so much momentum in your organization. We leapfrogged you five spots. So don't go get in the big head on me. I, I won't, buddy. I won't. <laughs> uh, amongst, amongst some rock stars and some people that I really admire. And that's what drives me. So let me ask you some questions. You've sponsored... Uh, how many people now on your frontline total? So I've sponsored 26 and I have 21 active as of today. It's so funny. It, this this question, every time I ask it, it's so funny. Everyone, it's like confession. I don't ask yeah. them what's active. Everybody does the same thing. Uh, you know, it just, it cracks me up. Anyways. Uh, well, you know, you know, it's a funny story. Everybody about that, does it. Is I'm so competitive. I've always said the big number. And somebody in my team called me out and said that that doesn't feel integral to me if you're telling us a number that doesn't really exist currently. And I thought there was valid merit in it. So that's why I do it now. I just want to leave with absolute integrity. I am a shipbuilder, so I can I could take a little tiny fishing boat and make it sound like the Moby Dick, you know, Princess right, right, Cruise. Right. I'm Fair guilty enough. of that. And so I just want to make sure I lead with absolute integrity. Well, I, I can totally appreciate that. Okay, so you sponsored 26 and you have 21, what did you say, 26 and 21 active? Correct. So some of you are going to have some people leave this business. I, I wish I could tell you every single agent and broker associate that joins this company stays forever. It's not true at any brokerage and it's not true here. So Randy, what is the key to helping with retention? How, do you, how have you found, because that's pretty good retention, 21 out of 26, why are so many of your agents um, love an EXP? Like, what do you do to retain them to help them stick around? Well, you know, it's a great question. I, and I think it's a learning process along the way as we grow our organization. I remember when I broke 50, when I broke 100, when I broke 200, when I broke 300. I remember those days very specifically because I look at that as a judgment of my success. And it it's really not. It's about how you're supporting in the depth of your organization, meaning that not in a level of seventh level necessarily, but just in somebody that looks up to you as a leader in the organization. And, and frankly, COVID has really changed a lot of things for me because I realized that agents needed support, guidance, and love more than ever. And, and as a coach, I really took it upon myself to look at what I was providing them and for me, it was really just about re-engaging with them on a personal level to make sure that every single one of them knows that I love and care about them. So I've done that in a, in a couple of series of emails and texts and personal phone calls. And I start with my, my personally enrolled and I made sure I connected with every single one of them within a week's period, just like you would do buyers and sellers, right? If you had eight escrows and COVID came along, you better be on the phone with those eight people and I just, I was so busy building that I didn't think I was given that a level 10 experience. So I committed to a level 10 experience. And then I committed to the level two people in a level 10 experience. And I've just worked that down to now that we have 
and and you know James is the best at this at the numbers and I'm not a numbers guy I'm a get out there and Vanna White it right but now that I know my numbers like crystal clear I could tell you exactly what I have on every line exactly what production is exactly what everybody's doing so I can support them and now what that looks like is uh, weekly con connection and communication it's uh, multiple leadership calls and interviews that we can provide value to them. It's asking great questions. By the way, Brent, your your uh, call on Saturday with Mark Victor Hansen was unbelievable. I listened to it this morning as I was occupied Saturday, and I have two pages of notes. And you know what I love about? I mean, I know Jack Canfield a little bit from my um, from my network marketing days. I've met him once or twice. And um, I never had the pleasure of listening to Mark Hansen, but I got so much out of that today. And one of the things he said was, uh, and I'm shifting gears a little bit, but be rejection proof. Book so many appointments that you overbook yourself and you just have no job but or no uh, choice but to just keep moving forward. And it was just so powerful. And so now we're taking that momentum, which I appreciate you, you know, acknowledgement is one of my love languages. I appreciate that acknowledgement. <laughs> but now, now that we've identified momentum, we want to keep it going. So what we're doing within our organizations is we're laser focused on keeping in touch with everybody. And we do the report every month of who new comes into business, whether it's one or we had 28 last month, whatever it is. We reach out to every one of them knowing that they're part of the love boat as well. They're part of the love and support and guidance that we have. We're not only just trying to talk them or encourage them into meetings and, and connecting, even though we know building uh, to events is building belief. And Brent is the master at it. And I'm not just saying this because we're on stage together. He is the master at it. And really reaching down into those people that took the faith, have the trust to join and lock arms with somebody in my organizational team or outside of it, and really letting them know that they're part of a bigger um, program. They're part of a bigger vision. They're part of something much larger. And I just put them in front of Brent, Brent's stuff. And I put them in front of other leaders' stuff that because you never knew who they're going to attract to, right? And we invite them to our stuff. And all this stuff revolves around them being supported. And when you support them and they feel they're part of something, they're not going to leave the company because they got a new shiny offer somewhere. Thank you, Randy. Beautiful. So you you made it a point to be purposeful and intentional. Do you have things in your calendar? You have, um, you know, like, how could these people take what you're saying? They go, well, I've only got five people or 15 people. I don't have hundreds of people like you, Randy Bird, Coach Randy. But what can they do? Uh, you know, would you say live, put something in your calendar, you know, retention Monday, uh, growth Wednesday, freak out Friday? I don't know. But put how do they be purposeful and intentional about making sure they're staying in touch? What, and, you know, what do you, do you put stuff in your calendar? How, what does that look like? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, the answer is yes. From a coaching perspective, nothing exists unless it's in your calendar. But there's it. a lot of opportunities for that. And I'll just give you some nuggets that may or may not uh, feel, you know, integral with what you do. And I want it to feel congruent or you're not going to do it. But what I do is, is I classify everybody in my system in a, in a tofu, mofu, or bofu, meaning that top of the funnel opportunity, middle of the funnel opportunity, or bottom of the funnel opportunity. You can call it an ABC type buyer-seller relationship. And so if I have an agent that is very receptive, very communicative, I want to talk to them every week. And if I get somebody else that's very slow, um, maybe they're analytical, maybe they're just not quite ready, maybe they just moved then there may be a, a C or a, a top of the funnel, which puts them in an every 30 day communication. And everything is scheduled out. Uh, Don Yoakum's the master at follow-up. He's, uh, even in my perspective, I, I knew better, but wasn't doing it. I don't leave a call without the future appointment booked. Even if it's a maybe appointment, I want an appointment booked if we have a conversation. So no matter who you talk to, whether you have five or 500, just start sorting your list of the of the interest that they have, the communication you're having with them, and then have a follow-up cadence that is systematic to that. And in my prospecting this morning, I, I had uh, somebody that I thought was a two-week follow-up type person, a mofu in my, in my system. And I asked him, I go, hey, I'd like to stay in touch. Is every two weeks acceptable to you? 
Is it okay if every two weeks I reach out to you and we have a conversation? And they said, that's perfect. So I got permission, just like how often you can call a seller, no different, right? And then really the the real power and horsepower in this is making it about them, not you. And what Mark Hansen said on your call that I love so much is when you get nervous about calling another agent or you feel like, you know, the butterflies or you're, you're some, one of your big fish or anything, just shift to asking great questions. Get out of it being about you. Because if it's about you, you're going to be nervous because you're being self-centered and you're being, you know, self-directed to your needs. If you nice. make it about them and you get into service and ask them great questions, like, how can I be of service to you? Or what are your goals, your visions, your dreams? Like, where do you see yourself in five years? When you get them talking about that, they'll encourage and look forward to future conversations with you rather than you shooting on them and then getting to a point to where you're like calling them so much that they start ghosting you. And that's that's the part of this that doesn't feel good. Wow, beautiful. Now, for people who missed uh, Saturday mornings built for this live, Rob, can you post that in the notes here, in the public notes? How that We're going to post what Randy got to watch this morning because he wasn't available Saturday morning with uh, Mark Victor Hansen and his wife. Um, that was really good. You, I don't know you said you agree with that, Randy. So we're going to post that there. Randy, we got one minute left because I got a hard stop. I have, do have you a call it. at noon. One minute left. What do you recommend to everybody? If they want it so bad, they can taste it. If, if they're just hungry for growth to sponsor agents and, and broker associates, what, what's your final volley for them, the key to success to just to, to their breakthrough, their personal breakthrough? I love that question. And I have I have something that is going to sound easy on the surface and harder to comp, uh, harder to do it. But it's daily action and accountability to that action, meaning that on my calendar every day from 930 to 1030 is my prospecting time. And I found myself, even as a coach, knowing better, not always doing it. So I found an accountability partner, a different one every day that their only job is to show up and have an accountability to me. And then I offer them value in another way. So they help me because it's self-serving to me. But I would take everybody in the audience, pick a time that you want to recruit or you want to have agent attraction is a better language. Have, have that time, whether it's Friday like Brent did or one hour a day or whatever it is for you, but make it a, a gospel in your calendar and find an accountability partner that understands how important it is to you and have them show up on the call. I do a Zoom call with my counter, accountability partner, Doug Grace, today, and we're looking at each other while I'm making my calls. It's a little nerve wracking, but it's the ultimate level of accountability to your dreams and goals and visions. Whoa, that is awesome. I love it. Hey, how bad do you want it? Watch the Michael Jordan series. I binged on it last night, watched five of them. That dude wanted to be successful so bad. I mean, I like I did not realize how bad Michael Jordan trained. And not everybody him. loved him during it, but they love him now, right? Yeah, exactly. So you 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 got to do the work. Um, thank you, Randy, for being on today. You're amazing as always. And hey, everybody, just a reminder, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, and 30 at 1230 Pacific, I am doing Lunch and Learns, vir lunch and learns virtually. If you want to attend those with guests, you just go to brinkoresources.com, which is right behind me. Oh, it's not on the board, but um, brinkoresources.com. And then when you clear this, and uh, well, that's the model explained. But um, uh, the point is, when you go there, click on the red bubble, where's Brent? And it gives you the Zoom link you can copy and paste and give the guests. I interview a broker or a superstar agent when it's over every time live. And uh, it's been a home run. So there you go. Have a great awesome. week, everybody. Randy, thank you, man.